Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, sure, gameplay of Super Pang or Super Bowser Brothers on the Super Nintendo, personal choice. Um, well, I, I normally call it uh, Super Pang, even if the American name for everyone is Bowser Brothers, Super ba Bowser Brothers, which is technically the sequel, the second part of this series. Um, this is a Capcom game, kind of famous for the Super Nintendo. Um, I have done a few live streams on, uh, I remember the first Pang. I think I didn't play this one in detail. Um, it's basically the same mechanics, basically, to, to use these uh, harpoons or whatever they are to to pop the, uh, the balloons or the bouncing balls. I don't know if we can consider those balloons. And there are a few sequels for the arcade as well that I think uh, weren't released in any other console, uh, that, at least what I remember. I did a let's play two years ago of Punk 3 uh, on, uh, on the arcade. It was a, a CPS game um, released only in Japan, if I'm not mistaken. I did uh, that game, I think with commentary, with the crappy commentary used to have back in the day. It doesn't mean my commentary currently is amazing, but at least uh, l sounds less dumb, if you will, than the previous one. So I did a complete playthrough of that, 50 levels or something, with some failure, of course. Uh, you know, this game is really easy for a player to fail. Um, there is another sequel called Mighty Pang. Uh, I think also released on in, only in Japan since it was it maintained the Japanese name. Remember, Japanese name is Pang, and the American one is uh, Bowser Brothers. Um, so what else can I say? Well, you basically travel around the world, if that's what you do. At least in the first two Pan games, in the third one you go, you are in an in an art gallery, and you are supposed to go through different pictures, different uh, famous paintings, including the Mona Lisa, which was one of the last ones, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so you like you get sort of inside of those pictures, those paintings, and, and those are like the main backgrounds you see here. In the traditional Pan games, you, the background is basically a part, a location. Uh, around the world, if you will, but in the, in the sequels they try to change some aspects of it. I remember the first game had 50 levels, it took me like two hours to beat it, I remember I was streaming it, and like the entire game took me like a bit more than an hour. Uh, no, I, the, the first 49 levels took me like an hour, and the, the, the last level took me another fucking hour, something like that. Uh, I think this one also has 50 levels. Um, they are called worlds, but they're just basically representing levels. And the main worlds are the continents. I'm in Africa right now, and then you move to Europe. Asia, I don't remember the order, but you, you are pretty much starting from uh, Asia, Africa, and then you're moving to Europe and America. Um, at, le at least I'm trying to remember the first game. In the third one, as I told you, they uh, basically use uh, paintings in an art gallery, and each painting, uh, there are like three levels, there are like 20 different paintings or something like that, which are the backgrounds. In can see here basically. Mighty Pang, I don't really remember that game, it's from 2001 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I don't really remember um, how the, the game was working, even if I play a bit of it on streams on like more than a year ago for sure. So I probably co could play it uh, even for the Capcom vs Konami series that I'm supposed to play it for, for, for us to see the differences. Uh, there is of course a graphical improvement which is actually very attractive to play such a classic game with improved, with enhanced graphics. Yeah, I was starting like in, yeah, Africa if I'm not mistaken, moving through, you know, Australia, I believe. Geography is not my type of thing, as you can tell, but yeah, I don't think I'm so lost in that sense.
I think so far I haven't lost any life. It's basically because the game is easy. Uh, at first, of course, the first... I don't know... Uh, the, the first half of the game itself is normally really easy to go through without dying. The, you don't require so many strategies for you to go through the levels. It, it, sometimes you need some strategies like calculator uh, where certain balls are supposed to be bouncing for you to destroy them. Um, it's a little bit of thinking applied here. Sometimes, right? Because uh, if, if there is something I really detest from a certain video game is to think. I mean, I, I don't think at all and man, there is no reason for me to to be thinking in a fucking video game I'm supposed to have fun and just you know, fuck around with it but not you know, prove my fucking skills mental skills, fuck that I don't give a shit world 10, oh, first 10 levels it's actually not so much of progress like 20% of the game, I don't know Remember this is a short gameplay, I'm not gonna go through the entire game, even if I could, with save states and all that good stuff, but for now, I'm just gonna play a little bit of this for, you know, for memories or for the one who want to try it out. Okay, this is the first failure, it was really stupid, actually I could have avoided that, I was just caring about moving as, as, as soon as I could, and well, since I did that, uh, I failed. Man, if possible, try to get shields and maintain them as much as you can. Um, you get power-ups in here, I actually forgot to mention that, when it just failed, once more. Uh, it's not that difficult to get um, power-ups in here, and, well, if, if possible, make sure to get, uh, you know, the double shot, which is my favorite, without a doubt. Even if the other shot, actually this one, um, for you to, you know, stick this uh, harpoon on, on on the, on the ceiling for a few seconds, it's not really reliable, even if it assures it's gonna destroy some uh, bouncing balls, it doesn't stay there forever, that's the only problem, uh, but that's why I make sure using the, the double shot instead. Uh, but I think the most useful item is the shield, because it allows you to get a hit, two hits actually in total. So you can play with a, bit, a little bit more of confidence in you. Okay, too much failure, I th well, my last life, if I lose the life, I just finish the video, there is no point in continuing, for now. Uh, 12 levels, uh, it's not that bad. Probably doesn't have 50 levels, as I thought it probably has less, but the normal thing from what I remember f uh, from Pang 1 and Pang 3, or Passive Brothers 1 or 3, whatever, okay, I just got a life, never mind. Uh, it has 50 levels, each of them. Okay, just clear another level. It's definitely a time for something else, so let's go. Yeah, this definitely must be Africa, man. I mean, the, the backgrounds are... Okay, now we got the double shot. The enemies don't kill you, but what they do is to paralyze you. Of course, by paralyzing you, you're not able to attack, you're not able to uh, avoid this uh, bouncing ball, so you eventually could die if you get touched by this uh, fire, or these alligators, or whatever they are. They just paralyze you, they, they don't actually kill you. I cl okay, that was Asia, not Africa, okay, my bad. So yeah, basically the big worlds, or the gr biggest division of uh, levels is based on the continents. Okay, that's all for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, I'll see you next time.